Okay, we're going to uh, just briefly, as uh, quickly and as most efficiently as possible, going to go through some of the things to look for in the valve body and the spacer plate. Now, a lot of times that when you go through a Turbo 400, somebody's been in there before, they've put a cheap shift kit in it, tried to make their own shift kit, put an expensive Transgo, Transtech, B&M kit in it. Uh, I want to give you an idea of what to look for, stock, aftermarket, and things to look for in the valve body. If you want to modify the valve body, there's plenty of uh, technical blogs, uh, even on my own website where I detail how you can modify the valve body. There's just like an infinite amount of uh, ways you can modify a valve body, both yourself and with a shift kit. I do, for professional reasons, say that if you're not very familiar with it and want good results, I would go with a professionally built shift kit. Uh, I prefer Transgo myself or Superior. Uh, the Superior one for the Turbo 400, yeah. I, I've had better luck with the Transgo kits to get you where you're at if you do not know what you're doing with a valve body. But you can do it yourself. Look on the internet. Like I said, you can look on my blog and everything else. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through here. Um, this is a BOP spacer plate. This is pretty much what it looks like. I cleaned it up a little bit. Um, some things to look for on this. You're obviously, this one's a little bit stained. I've already polished it up. You can take a Scotch-Brite and uh, clean it up too. You're not going to hurt this. This is steel. Uh, one of the things to look for on this is that most of your ATSG and aftermarket books uh, will tell you to omit this check ball. But on a BOP, like I just laid a Chevy spacer plate right over a BOP plate, you notice this port that feeds third gear where they say to omit the check ball, there isn't even a hole there that could take advantage of it. So you got to remember, this is what it looks like. This is your third gear port. It's open on a Chevy transmission. It's not there on a BOP transmission. So if you're going to do a simple mod to keep up with uh, the standard rebuild manual like an ATSG or any other number of other manuals and vlogs, drill this hole out and you're probably going to omit that check ball too. You'll see that uh, in the final assembly video when I film it. That's the one thing to watch with your stock spacer plates. Now you can take these plates, uh, like right here, uh, you can drill this out to modify your second gear shift. You would drill this port out to modify your third gear shift. This is kind of what a cheaper kit, uh, like a cheap B&M, or a very cheap uh, you know aftermarket shift kit plate will look like it'll be an off color like this I believe uh, I don't know if it's plated or adenized I call it it's got that die cast finish you can tell it's got that nice sheen and obviously somebody's drilled out like here you can see where they've drilled out for second gear and make it made it uber and then third gear they've drilled it out then uh, your cheaper cheaper shift kit plates will look like this where they swiss cheese a bunch of holes in it right here instead of having the big groove passages let's say well, let me overlay this so you can have a look at it it's just as good in that sense you can see how you know they use grooves they use holes in the uh, cheaper shift kit plates and grooves and I want to say that's a superior or some I believe there's a Fairbanks shift kit too I usually when I see these these are dog shit they're, they're not really worth the money you'd be better off drilling holes in a stock plate then you have the transgo plate which is actually two or three small plates glued together again we've got the holes but notice how thick that is compared to like, like a factory plate Let's see and there's been a lot of engineering involved in this thing and there's some substantial differences in the quality of this plate versus one of these cheaper plates other things like when you get a transgo kit and I'm just going to show you this now because I'm on this plate um, like here they've modified a governor and uh, this one they wanted to go full manual so you get a couple of clips 
hold the governor open instead of having to modify the valve body. Very, uh, if you don't do this every day of the week, this is the way to go because this is no nonsense. You get the instructions, no bullshit. Uh, and then obviously when you do the transgo kit, not, uh, not that I'm promoting it, but you get an extra like uh, one, two accumulator spring. It's a little stiffer that uh, gives you a little more crisper shift. You get a stiffer spring in the, uh, the second gear servo band. And uh, like this one, like on the other video, I noticed you also get different direct clutch springs, but uh, they weren't trans brake springs. The trans brake springs are a lot longer. So just throwing that in there. That's all I'm going to cover on that kit. Just throw these aside. Okay, we've got a valve body right here. Let's see if I can show you. This is an older valve body. Let's see here like that okay right here this is an older valve body you can tell but here's the 2-3 accumulator it sits below the servo that applies your low 2 band this one is smooth that's a dead giveaway this is an older valve body from the 60s somewhere around 70 71 when they changed the direct drum they also changed the valve body and I'll show you that too with these servos you have to use well, with these accumulators, you have to use this servo. It's an aluminum servo. Notice how it has the ridges on it. And this is where that aftermarket spring I just showed you um, would go. That applies the band. See, this is a little beefier spring right there. A little different. And here you can see this one has a metal sealing ring on this one. It's an older style. But largely, the valve body is identical. Here, there's numerous different valves for your downshift and upshift. The three you need to be concerned with, is this is your 1-2 shift, your 2-3 shift, your 3-2 downshift, and your 2-3 accumulator. These are the ones that you pretty much, this area of the valve body is all you need to be concerned with. Now, when you clean it up, you basically you'll pull these valves out. This is where most of your shift kits will have all the modifications in there. And... Uh, and these you'll just clean it out you can remove them if you want I rarely do this is very durable you rarely ever have to um, I mean if it's really a cooked transmission you probably just find another valve body to start with all together uh, clean it out real good with some cleaner dry it off throw some WD-40 in here and the rest of these valves take a small screwdriver and uh, make sure they move you know like like so you know, just basically just make sure everything's happy. This is your selector valve. If you don't, this is what basically is hooked to the, uh, when you get that feel in the shifter, you're moving this, but all you're doing is moving a hydraulic valve. You're actually feeling against the spring when you're clicking it into gears. Fast forwarding a little bit. So I get in there. Now here's a different setup. This is a different servo setup. This was the early to mid 70s version. This one's been modified because uh, this came out of the kit with the Transgo kit. What they've done is they've removed the, spr they removed the spring here and put the servo or the 2-3 the accumulator back in here and then they uh, through the plate will block off this oil passage. This by uh, omitting this and putting that down in there without a spring and blocking this oil passage, it allows for a firmer third gear shift. Uh, this is what the second, uh, the low two band uh, apply servo looks like on the later model with one of these with the ridges. You see that? And it'll sit just on top like that. Notice this one has a composite sealing ring instead of the metal sealing ring. And it sits flat like that. Flat servo on a protruding 2-3 accumulator. If you have a flat accumulator, you need to have the servo with the ridges on it. If you get a mixed and match, your, your low 2 won't apply right and it causes problems. Late 70s into the 80s, they went to Basically, it's the same valve body, but then they used plastic for the 2-3 accumulator. These break. They're junk. 
When you see one of these, you shit can it and put an older aluminum one in there. Uh, in the late 80s, they actually went back to the aluminum, but through the late 70s, early 80s, they started putting these things in. And you'd notice uh, in a car that there was something wrong with it. When these things break, you couldn't hardly get the damn thing to go in reverse. You didn't really notice it in third gear, but you'd really notice it in reverse because uh, you back feed third gear to get into reverse. And if any part of a hydraulic circuit leaks, well, you're, it's just going to bleed pressure off the circuit and you're in deep shit. So, things to watch out for. When you see one of these, shit can it, put an aluminum in. That's the simplest mod you can do. I'm just showing the, uh, that to give you an idea. And uh, we're going to go back to this Transgo valve body here. And we're going to pull the 1-2 the and the 2-3 valve out just to show you. And this, just a roll pin right here. It actually has a little bit of a taper to it. I'm going to spin that plunger, hopefully, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it's going to fight me the whole way. I don't know. Come on. These can fight you. Ah, oh, come on now. Thing's going to fight me, isn't it? Here it goes. And what I do is uh, I spin the ass end around. 90 degrees and then there's grooves there and you can kind of just gingerly maneuver it out because these can be stiff sometimes they come out pretty tough there's part of your one two shift mechanism there's the other part now this one's modified this is an aftermarket See if I can find you one here in my bin. Has it been modified? No, that's an older one. Here's one that hasn't been modified. Notice how the land is missing right here. They omit this land right here and block off an oil port that's on the back which is part of the shift kit again you can read this online too on several blogs including mine uh, and then you could modify this by grinding this down but on the shift kit that this one came with it wasn't there at all and you just replaced the valve good quality shift kit and then they block off the passage there and what that's going to do is allow you to hold first gear indefinitely I wanted to show you that little difference. That's that's the first gear modification. If you have a transmission that even if you're holding it in low one and it upshifts the second gear, which GM designed it that way so you wouldn't blow the motor up, that's this is where you're going to do that modification. Uh, modified valve, unmodified. Right here, we're going to put the set, pull the second gear valve out. And this one has a pin that goes all the way through. If I go over here so you can see it. There's a pin, spring. Bottom half of it. So it's going to sit like this. This is the way that comes out. And this is the way that comes out. And 90% of the time, that's all you need to do when servicing a valve body. Clean it up good. Like I said, deal with your 2-3 uh, accumulator piston there. Make sure you have the right servo uh, to apply your low tube band matched up with your accumulator piston. And uh, you should be all set. Hope you enjoyed it.